God bless you, good morning, and welcome to everyone around the country, across the country, excuse me, and around the world, to the 6 a.m. Hour of Power Worship Experience here at Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church in Seattle, Washington, where we are under the dynamic leaderships of our pastor, Dr. Robert L. Manaway Sr., and his wife, our First Lady and Overseer, Jessica, Evangelist Jessica P. Manaway. My name is Lanny, and I give all honor to God, who is truly the head of my life, to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to the gift of the precious Holy Ghost that leads, guides, and comforts me every single day. If you don't mind, would you please open your Bibles and read with me Psalms 96, verses 1 through 4. I am reading the New Living Translation, and it reads as follows. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. 
publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. Please bow your heads with me in prayer. God, our God, oh, how we worship, honor, adore, and exalt you. You are great and greatly to be praised. Therefore, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise for all the mighty, miraculous, wondrous things you've done in our lives. Father, thank you for sending us your only son. Jesus, we thank you for the plan of salvation, the redemption of our souls, and reconciling us back to our Heavenly Father when you sacrificed yourself for us on Calvary's cross. Also, thank you for sending us the comforter and spirit of truth to lead and guide us as we continue to become new in you. Please bless and grace us with your loving presence and your power to save, heal, set free, restore, and reconcile throughout the entirety of this worship experience. Bless and anoint and use the man of God to bring glory to your name. When you do, we will be mindful to exalt magnify and glorify you and you alone. In Jesus' name we ask and give thanksgiving. Amen and glory to God. God bless you all and have an amazingly wonderful week. The problem is this. And this is the problem that we have as believers when we're trying to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our understanding. I hope I've been clear. I hope I've been concise. I, I hope I've pushed us to the point of realizing, again, my, 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 my former statement was that the problem is that we can't do both. Trust in God with all of our hearts and lean to our own understanding at the same time. We can't do both. Do you hear me, somebody? I mean, it's just to the point where we just got to choose this day whom we going to serve. Joshua said that thousands of years ago. He said, what does it seem like to you? That's all right. Judge me. But as for me, he makes a determination. As for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. We're going to trust God. We're going to do what he says. Do. We're going to go in the paths that he tells us to go. So that seems evil to you, you go on and say and feel and think whatever you want to. Hmm. After all, we aren't called again to trust God with some or most, but rather we are called, dear hearts, to trust God with all our heart. Do you hear what I'm saying, somebody? We are called to trust God with all of our heart. This morning, I want to suggest to you that rather than looking for wisdom within ourselves and looking for wisdom uh, in this world, that we as followers of Christ need only to look to God. Oh, thank you for that great exhortation. Uh, from the scripture that says, I will lift mine eyes, thank you, Psalmist, to the hills from which cometh my hip, my hip. And I like the translation, it says, all my hip comes from the Lord. So that's what it means to lean not to your own understanding. Let me preach in a hurry. I know it's early. I want to get the church on time, and I, I want to see you in the sanctuary tabernacle. And you are visiting with us. I want you to get to your service on time. Here on the West Coast, I know back east, I, I know down south, I, in the Midwest, you 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 through with church. So now you're just putting a, a, a peeky boo in on what we're doing on the West Coast. Or whatever the case may be, let me preach in a hurry. It says, in all your ways... Acknowledge. One translation said, this is best stated, submit to him. In all of our ways, we want to submit to the Lord. We want to acknowledge. We, as we enter this verse, of verse 6, 
we see a continuation from verse 5 and a continuation of the exclusive language. Once again, not some, not most. Matter of fact, just take a minute and I'll say that with me, everybody who's, who's with me. Say, not some, uh, not most. I say it one more time. Not some, but most. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. And then in verse 6, in all your ways. Not some, not most. Okay, I'm preaching myself happy. Not some of your ways, Ariel. Not most of your way oh god the theology of the old saints just really makes sense doesn't it lord i'm running trying to make a hundred ninety nine <laughs> and a half won't do hmm ain't this something i'm running I'm trying, I'm struggling, I'm straining, trying to make a hundred, one, zero, zero, ninety-nine point five won't do. In all my ways, let me acknowledge him. Let me submit to him. Not in some, not in most, but in all my ways. In Proverbs chapter 6, uh, 3, rather, verse 6, Solomon chooses the word acknowledge rather than the word trust that he used in verse 5. This word means to be in uh, fellowship with God and not just a casual relationship. Ah, sure. <laughs> I, can, I can see where this is going. When I acknowledge God, it says that I want a relationship with God. I, I want something deep with God. I want to be in communion with God. Mm. Not just a casual relationship, but fellowship with me and God or whether I commit myself God to having things in common with him. See, fellowship means when uh, one cries, another cries. When one is happy, the other is happy. When one is sad, a burden, the other is. We share in the experiences of each other. And there are no hands, uh, have nots in fellowship. This means that we obey God's directions and rules for our life. That's what fellowship with God means versus a casual relationship. You know what? Tab and friends, this could even make some of us paranoid to use statements going forward like, uh, uh, everything is all right with me and Jesus. Got it? Me and the Lord have an understanding. God, what are we saying? The Lord understands us. I don't know if we understand God like he knows us. Matter of fact, we don't know him like he really knows us. I believe we become more acquainted with him as we intend to have intentional fellowship with him as we sit in his presence as we muse and stay in his word as we commune with him in prayer and meditation, meaning I talk, I pray, but then I sit for a moment so I can hear what the Spirit of God may say back to me. As I learn and grow to be an obedient child of God, not just knowing what the Lord requires, but doing what the Lord requires, hmm, my fellowship with him is increased. Mm, isn't that beautiful? In all your ways, acknowledge him. We are to submit every part of our being to God. Rather than doing what we want, mm, that is, we pursue 
what God says is best. Okay, I know, y'all, 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 hold on just a minute. Let me look over here. Rather than doing what I want, say that with me, someone. Rather than doing what I want, <laughs> say, rather than doing like I want to do. Rather than doing it like I feel like doing it. Rather than having my own way, I pursue what God says is best. What a way of acknowledging. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Lord, your way. What is the best way and the best path you chose for me? Here it is. When I give myself to God's way or to the best path God's had, when I'm really going after where he's leading me, remember, where he leads me, I will follow. So when I got when I get my mind on God, when I get my eyes fixed on him, when I'm determined to live in the purpose of his righteousness, Solomon ends this wonderful plethora of verses 5 and 6 by saying, if I do that, what? Trust in him with all my heart. Don't lean to my own understanding. In all my ways, acknowledge him. Those are the three commands. Remember about three weeks ago, we said three commands and a promise. He says, if I do the things that are commanded, lean not to my own understanding. In all my ways, acknowledge him. Got it? Trust in him with all my heart. God says, now he will make my path straight. Hmm. It's almost frightening, huh? Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Three commands. Then if I keep those, God says, I will make your path straight. Hmm. Okay. This proverb ends then promise it's always a promise when we do what God says do now this is just fundamental you, you don't even have to worry about Proverbs 3 5 and 6 right here I'm talking about not just this but everything God has said everything God has commanded there is always promise attached to obedience dare to believe God, dare to trust God. Mm-hmm. This proverb begins with this wonderful promise. If we trust in God, if we lean not on our own understanding, if we acknowledge and poor says submit to God, then Ooh, God, help me up in here. There are some believers listening to me right now who need to experience more T-H-E-N's S's in your life. Then's. <laughs> some of us haven't had a then experience in a long time. What do you mean, R.L.? I'm trying to say some of us have struggled so with obeying God and following the commands and doing what God tells us to do and allowing God to lead us and choose the best paths till we haven't experienced a lot of thens. But if we trust in him, lean not to our own understanding, acknowledge him, then, see, I shouldn't, you shouldn't, we shouldn't expect any things until we comply. Trust in, lean not, and acknowledge. Then he makes our path straight. 
So many of us want straight paths without obedience. So many of us want blessings without sacrifice and without struggle. Hmm. Uh, uh, in days past, I've said it like this. We want heavenly things, but we want to keep living like hell. Don't worry like that. The, the, re the reality is, when we trust in ourselves and lean on our own wisdom, mm -hmm, it doesn't work out that well for us. If, if it, 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 it never, hear me someone, this is one of those, it never, somebody say it never, it will never. Now, th there's some things when you can say never, and this is one of those cases, it will never lead to the life we hope would come. It will never lead to the lasting joy we crave and that we seek that can only be found in God until we learn to trust in, to lean not, and to acknowledge him then. Now, I want to say to somebody listening, we need to be careful. C-A-R-E-F-U-L. C-A-R-E-F-U-L. Careful. You need to understand that there's some in, in the body of Christ that teach mm, that we have to have this as a means of trusting God that by some miracle we can force God's hand to do for us what we choose to be best for ourselves. God is not our spiritual bag man. God is not our sugar daddies. God is not our sweet tooth or our tooth fairy. He's God. We cannot manipulate him. <laughs> we cannot cause him to get out of character. We cannot cause him to lie. We got to be careful, dear hearts, that we don't try to make God meet our standards instead of us rising to meet God's standards. In this case, then, we need only look to Jesus, his life, how he came to this earth. He was always saying to those who will listen, I didn't come to do my own will. I came to do the will of him that has sent me. And then in John chapter 4, he gives us this urgency of the doing. So I got to work while it is day. For night is coming when no man can work. Got it? Jesus said, I'm going to trust my father. I'm going to hmm, not lean to my own agenda, which I came into the world. I came to do his will. I'm going to, I'm going to submit to the purpose by which I am in your presence. Jesus' whole life here on earth, he taught us how to go through to know in all uncertain terms that if we would do the Lord's will, his way, then he would lead us in the right path. So then the heart's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 meaning. Isn't that everything God helped me preach good here? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I need you to hear this. The concluding thought is that it doesn't mean, Austin, that everything will always work out in our favor if we trust God. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Remember, Jesus came to do the Lord's will, and God's will led him hmm, to a cross. The will of God caused him to have nails placed in his hand. To do God's will uh, earned him a spear in the side. To, to do God's will earned him thorns pressed in his brow. 
to do God's will. Mm. Cause him to be hung as a spectacle before men to be mocked, to be spit upon, to be beat. Mm. Trust in God. Then I always mean every day is sunny, no more clouds, no more rain, no more rivers to cross, no more mountains to climb. But it does mean that if God leads you to it, mm, God has the power and God has the proclivity to bring you through it. Come on, say that with me. That's an old church saying. Say, if God brings me to it, God will bring me through it. Come on, let's get happy. <laughs> Say, if God brings me to it, if God allows it, then God will get me through it. <clears throat> this is where I, I tend to shout with Job when uh, he got those reports one after another mm, that all of his cattle were gone, all of his sheep were gone, all of his servants had been killed, all of his crops had been decimated, one thing after another. And if you read Job's life of trusting in God, mm -hmm. if you read his life of not leaning to his own understanding, if you read his life of him acknowledging and submitting to God, this is a man in Job 1 that said he prayed every day, he avoided evil as much as he could and still mm, tragedy from a human perspective came his way all sovereignly permitted by the hand and will of a loving God. So I would be remiss today if I let someone left my presence believing that our young man always said that if he trusts God with all his heart and didn't lean to his own understanding that everything was going to just work out all right and that there was going to be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more suffering. No, I don't want to reproach God like that. But what I am saying to the body of Christ is that uh, sometimes we will face difficulties and we will go down a dark and difficult paths of life and these dark and difficult paths of life will be caused not that we did not trust God not that we did not lean to our own understanding. Nor that we not submit to God and acknowledge him. But some of these dark and difficult paths that we will find ourselves on will be the result of us trusting in the Lord. And our uh, not leaning to our own understanding. Sarah, you need to know that following Jesus and trusting in him does not always mean that the sun is always shining and that uh, you never be talked about butte to scorn. We need to understand that our limited understanding can make it seem like the trials of this life mean that God isn't in control or that God is not even good. Well, may I suggest to you then the Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is communicating that what appears to be right in the moment may not always be the case. 
Mm -mm. And that's when we have to trust in the word of the apostle Paul. When Paul sings, and we know that all things will work together for the good of them who love God. For those who are the called according to God's purpose. Do you hear what I'm saying? So on the way to my seat this morning, with all your heart, you got to get this tabernacle. It means you're not going to lean to your own predicaments. It means the heart that you have a perpendicular relationship with God that will always cause you to line up with the position God has. And that's called righteousness. Do you know that righteous means straight? So if I'm never gonna experience demons in my life, I gotta make sure that I'm walking and living as straight as I can. That's all I want to say. Oh, child of God, to understand with the faculties of the human mind is disaster from the beginning. My mind and your mind cannot contain the glories of God. Intellectually, we cannot compare with the infancy of God. God's mind is so high. God's heart is so wide. God understanding is so deep until I can't figure him out intellectually I cannot understand him comprehensively I have to trust him ain't got all right in Luke 24 verse 32 the word said they said to each other did not our hearts burn while he talked with us on the way while he opened us the scripture what they were trying to say if I don't lean to my own understanding if I submit to him in all my way. Oh, if I trust him with all my heart, he had the proclivity to cause a fire to burn in my heart. Let me go hear y'all and let my grandma testify. She used to say when she got happy right through here. A little talk with Jesus. Have a little talk with Jesus. He'll hear your faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. Fear the prayer will turn. Know that the fire is burning. A little talk with Jesus It'll make it all right Good morning See you in a little while Tabernacle bud If you never Hear me again If you never See me again If you miss me Down here I want you to know I'm trusting In the one Who went to a cross On a Friday evening I'm trusting In one Who died for my sins trusting in the one that was buried in a barren tomb oh trusting in one that stayed in the grave all day Friday all day Saturday all 
all night, Saturday night, but early, I say early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Now I want to know, are you trusting him? Are you trusting him? Say yes! Trusting. Say yes! Trusting. Yes! Yes! Not leaning. I'm trying to stay spiritually perpendicular so that where he leaves me, I will follow. I want some more beans, T H E N, apostrophe S, is in my life. And I know I can't get there with my own understanding. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May our Lord's countenance be round about you and you experience his peace until we meet again. Amen. Good day and shalom. Where he leads me, I will follow. Blessings and grace. Up, let me hear you say, Lord, I'm just gonna trust in you with all of